You can see how worn this is and how many notes I've kind of taken. So yeah, that's all of them that I was just going to run through today. I think there's, what, seven of them. Hello, I'm Lou, and welcome back to Open Up the Cloud. So I got asked a question the other day, and they were wondering about what different books potentially to look into related to the cloud. And I haven't actually done a video on this, and I thought, why not? I had a look down at the side of my desk, and I've got a big old stack of different tech books. I'll take you through some of these. Here they are. Let me show you. Yeah. So yeah, that's all of them that I was just going to run through today. I think there's, what, seven of them. Uh, so in no particular order, I'll kind of take you through, talk about each different book, what it's good for, uh, who I would recommend it to, and kind of what you're going to get out of it. Let's start with this one then. So we have here, The Phoenix Project. So this is actually written as a novel. So it's kind of written as a story. And the whole idea is the story kind of embodies some of the practices around DevOps. I can't say that I massively enjoyed it. It wasn't really my style of learning. However, it is one of the most popular books in this space. If you go onto Amazon, etc., you're going to see lots and lots of different reviews for The Phoenix Project project basically and there is also now a subsequent follow-up to all that which I think is called the Unicorn Project. I haven't read that one but I think it's just as well regarded as that one so if you're wanting to understand some things around sort of best practices for implementing basically DevOps culture in a company go and check out the Phoenix Project. Next one is basically this one Site Reliability Engineering and this was basically written by a whole host of different authors within Google and it's quite famous within the tech space. The bit that I took out most of from this is actually the first few chapters that talk about SLIs, SLOs and SLAs. <laughs> you can see my writing on there. So SLOs are really these sort of metrics that you apply to your services and they help you with understanding and monitoring them, setting objectives that you're going to strive for and then setting up things like your alerting and everything else around it on that. The rest of the book goes into some more sort of details about Google itself and some Google specifics, which can be interesting. However, I probably wouldn't recommend some of that stuff really for a beginner. I think it's, you know, it's, it's very nerdy and very technical and definitely useful to have kind of dip into it throughout your career. But if you're kind of just starting out, I'd probably recommend those early chapters on SLIs and SLOs SLOs. If you could mention those in an interview, for instance, I think that would be very cool. People would be very impressed if you knew about SLIs and SLOs if you were just a beginner. So another one here, Accelerate. This one really comes in this family of other books like The Phoenix Project and some others. This is really going into some research and data about sort of team structures and cultures and company best practices. And yeah, that might not seem like it's totally related to the cloud, but it really is. It talks about some different ideas. So let me show you. This is the, show me the contents page in there as well. So it talks about stuff like continuous delivery. We talk about sort of fast flow and feedback loops, talking about lean, lean project management. And these are all different terms that you're going to come across when you get into the software industry. So it kind of helps to have that kind of background on that already, because it's something that maybe you might not think to look into. And then when you land in a company, people are all saying all these weird ideas like lean and agile, etc. And that can give you a bit of a background into that. Okay, taking a bit of a different direction, we have this one, the Cloud Developer Workbook. So this one is from a guy called Ryan Lewis. He talks a lot online about the cloud, and he's also got a YouTube channel, which you should check out. And this is an interesting book, because it is kind of a companion to the 100 Days of Cloud. If you're not already aware of what 100 days of cloud is that's also a cool community where people take on this challenge to do basically 100 things in the cloud industry in 100 days and this is a companion to that and it gives you exercises let me see if you can see that different exercises that you can do this is AWS specific so all different AWS exercises and you know you've kind of got one per page and it shows you you know go in and you can have a look at this service and do XYZ and that's going to help you to understand how that service works so if you're kind of looking for something to give you 100 days of cloud a bit of structure you can go and check that out I think you can get it on free you can get it free as well online in PDF format, but I just wanted a hard copy. I thought it would be kind of cool. Favorite all time technical book, which is this one, Building Microservices by Sam Newman. There is actually a new version. I don't know if it's out just yet, but it's about, about now. You can see how worn this is and how many notes I've kind of taken on the different pages throughout this book. I really like it. Basically, microservices and sort of an architectural pattern. It's kind of a big term that encompasses a lot of different aspects within technology. And the reason that I like this book a lot is because it goes sort of into a perfect level of detail about how microservices work. It talks about how you should deploy them, how you should size them, how big a microservice should be, what even is a microservice. I just found it incredibly practical. And one thing that I really appreciated within this as well that Sam does within his writing is he's quite opinionated sometimes. So he takes a stance and if he likes some aspect or some different approach, he'll kind of state that in the book. He'll say that he's a fan of that approach or not a fan of another one. And I really appreciated that he kind of took a stance and, you know, on those different areas and kind of put his own opinion into the book, which, you know, for me was very useful. And I, I've read this one a whole host of different times now. Next one. So we've got this one here, DevOps Handbook. This one is very similar to the Phoenix Project. Whilst I didn't really enjoy the Phoenix Project because it was kind of this novel and kind of a story, this one really takes a lot of the ideas within the Phoenix Project and kind of puts it into this reference guide, which for me was a bit better because that's kind of more of what I wanted than sitting there reading a, a sort of a story. It kind of felt like I was at work reading 
a book at home about tech, which I didn't really enjoy too much. But this one, this one is absolutely chocked full of information as well. If I was going to recommend one, I'd probably recommend this one. The reason being is it talks about a lot of different practices and approaches that are going to be really useful. Things like, I don't know, canary deployments, about blue-green deployments, about A-B testing, about all, all different types of practices like that that are going to be really useful when you get into the workplace. If you talk about any of these ideas, for instance, within an interview, if you're able to bring any of those up, that is really going to make you stand out, I think, against different candidates that maybe don't have that understanding or that context of some of these organizational setups. And then last but not least is this book. So this one actually isn't really a technical book, but I wanted to throw this in here because it's kind of like more of a soft skills book. So Sprint gives you a kind of seven day, well actually five day, I guess. It's a weak formula for building and implementing an idea in the workplace using this sort of ideas like right? MVP and minimal viable product. The reason that I want to recommend it though is because it's kind of chocked full of little ideas and sort of workshops and things that you can do. So kind of how you can get together stakeholders, how you can facilitate sessions, how you can do some user testing. And I think it's just a very nice approach. Most companies will do this. Maybe they don't do it in five days, but they will do very similar approaches and things like that in the workplace as well. And I think that will just give you an extra bit of context. Some people have also asked me as well about how they can kind of hone soft skills. And that's kind of difficult when you're not in the workplace, because then when you're in the workplace, you can kind of build on those soft skills as well. But that one, Sprint, I think is a good book to pick up if you're trying to brush up on some soft skills and you want to impress on the softer side of stuff before getting into a job in tech. So there you go, seven different books that I would recommend and why. But I hope that was useful for you. I thought I would just, yeah, pick up some of these books off the floor and run through them. What I'll do is I'll try and leave some links to that in the description as well so that you can find all of those. And if you want to pick any up, then you can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.